Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. If you like the math videos that I've been putting out, I have a sponsor for this video and I'll show you at the end of this video where they basically take what I post and we can make it into something that's so much more. We have extra practice, we have extra content. The site is called Zillearn and I will show you more about it, give links to it in the video description down there. But if you're interested in these same videos, dynamic and visual, but you want to take it to the next level, go ahead and check out that. Again, the links are in the video description and I'll talk about it a little bit more at the end. For now, let's get into our lesson on understanding improper fractions. Improper fractions are fractions that look kind of like this. If you're saying to yourself, I don't understand fractions, I just don't get them, I want you to understand that there is a part that goes in the numerator or on the top of the fraction and then there's a hole and that goes on the bottom of the fraction and boom, we just made a fraction. So exciting. All right, so let's do a quick review of what a fraction looks like and then we'll talk about improper fractions. This is a fraction. The part or the numerator is on the top the whole is on the bottom and there's something called a fraction bar that separates those two. When we have a fraction like this, one out of two, it means one of two or one out of two or one part out of a total of two. It also means one half. When we draw it visually, we would draw it in this way. One half of it is shaded in orange so it's one part is orange out of two total parts. If I was given this fraction here, what would that be? As a fraction, there's one shaded orange piece out of a total of three pieces, so we would say it's one out of three. So what do we do with a fraction that looks like this? We have a two on the top and a two on the bottom. Well, that means there would be two shaded pieces out of two. Hmm, that looks a little different than the fractions that we've worked with before, but it's still a fraction, two out of two. And we should practice this a little bit. What would this one be labeled as? If you have three shaded sections out of three, what's your total fraction gonna look like? That will be three out of three. Now there is a special word that we use for this when we fill up the entire, the whole thing. It's one whole, right? So we think about maybe before we were filling up just part of it, but now we've filled up the entire thing. So we filled up all of it and that is one, one full shape. In this case, they're rectangles. And that is actually the number one. One means that it is all filled up. Let's look at a couple more examples. Four out of four. What would this look like? Think about that for a second. What would it look like? Well, that would be four shaded squares out of a total of four. Five out of five. What would that one look like? Well, five shaded pieces out of five. And that is, I drew it in a circle. As long as the pieces are consistent sizes, it doesn't matter. So I've filled in all of the circles or all of the pieces of that circle. Remember, any time the top is the same as the bottom, it equals one, whoops, it equals one. Every time the top is the same as the bottom. Now we're going to get into improper fractions. Improper fractions is when the top number is actually larger than the bottom number. And that's gonna be a little bit different, but it's gonna follow the same rules that we've had. Look at this one, three out of two. So we can start off here with the two pieces out of two filled in. We know that's two out of two, that's equal to one whole, it's two out of two. And then we'll draw another group of two and only fill in part of it. So it's kind of like it's filling up the first one and oh, it's all filled up and now we have to start filling up a second one. Now we can't just write it as two out of two and one out of two. So we actually have to write it as what we call a mixed number. And we know that two out of two is one, right? It's equal to one filled section. So we would write it as one and one half. 
And the way we write this is here, the one and one half. It's called a mixed number because it has a whole number that we write a little bit bigger, and then we still have a fraction because we've got part of it left over. We're going to do an example with a different shape, but the same basic idea. Let's do this one, six out of five. Six out of five. Think about how you would draw that. Think about what it looks like, and think about how you might write that as a mixed number. Well, let's start off with filling in five out of five pieces. And then what do we have left? We filled in five out of five pieces, but we started with six out of five, so we've got one left over. So now we have to fill in one more. See, it's almost like it fills up the first circle with red, and then it pours over and fills up only one section of the second circle. You'll notice that that is, if you count them up, six total pieces, or six fifths, six little pieces pie slices that are one-fifth of the actual circle. Again, we can't leave it like that, so we're going to have to change this into a mixed number. And the mixed number would look like this. One, one whole circle, and one out of five of the second circle. So it's one and one-fifth. Let's do another example. I'm going to change the shape up for you, but we're going to do the same thing. This one is seven out of four. Maybe you could pause the video and try this one on your own. Maybe you could draw a shape that has those pieces and fill in seven out of four. Try it out and see what you get. What would this be as an, a mixed number? Now I'm going to show you how to make it into a mixed number. I would start off with taking four out of four. So I'm going to draw it as a square that has four pieces. And again, I have filled up those four but I still have some left over because I have seven out of four. So there's four out of four and I have three out of four left over. So I'm going to fill in three pieces out of those four. Notice how that works. And if you take the top two numbers, the four and the three, and you add them together, you would get seven, right? You have seven pieces Again, we can't leave it like that, so how do we write this as, an Im as a mixed number? As a mixed number, this would look like one and three-fourths, all right? One and three out of four. Now, I want to put um, one more piece of vocabulary, one more word that I've been using, and I don't know if I defined it at the beginning. When you have a bigger number on the top of a fraction, that is called an improper fraction. All right, that's an improper fraction, and we're changing them into mixed numbers. In this example, I have an even bigger numerator. I want you to try this one out. Try drawing squares or boxes or something um, similar. You could draw circles, I guess. Um, try and draw those pieces and fill in part out of the whole and change this improper fraction into a mixed number. Pause the recording, try it out. All right, I hope you're back after having tried this out. For me, I'm gonna use squares for this one. So I'm gonna start out with two out of two, and then I'm gonna do another two out of two, and then I'm going to do one out of two. This is the biggest numerator that we've had, right? A five over two. We've never had it kind of spill over past the first one. So here we go, we filled up two out of two, and then there was still lots left over, so we filled out another one, two out of two, and then we filled out one more out of two. We can't leave it this way, we would have to write it as an, a mixed number, and it is two filled in pieces and half of the third one, right? So we would write this as two and a half. That is our mixed number final solution. What we learned today is improper fractions are fractions with a larger number on the top than on the bottom. I'm going to make a fraction again, boom, and we change it into mixed numbers. Like I said at the beginning, I want to talk a little bit about this um, platform Zilearn. Um, I made these courses 
on the basics of division and the basics of multiplication. If you want a visual lesson of what division looks like or what multiplication looks like, and it takes it past a video and into some graphics that I created. It also takes it into some application questions and quizzes all in a single platform. It's a cool thing to take a look at. Definitely take some time. I'll have the links in the video description. I hope that video was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.